introduce you to Jason Cosper. He's going to talk about duty now for the future. future. Oh, what it comes up next. Son of a... You're on. You're good. <coughs> well, it should uh, it should fit on the actual screen. So uh -oh. I'm going to try to fix that. But okay, please so he's continue. Okay, going to fix his slide deck, and then I'll just let me talk just for a sec. So um, he's the, the developer advocate at WP Engine. He's been working there for almost four years, um, but he is the fifth employee, and they're up to 300 employees now. And he enjoys collecting uh, vinyl and drinking craft beer. So let's all give Jason a warm welcome. Sorry about the delay here, folks. I believe I have. All right. All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, last presentation of the day. Pretty, uh, pretty excited to kind of head to the after party and uh, not have to listen about pressing words anymore. Well, this is a son of a really. I'm so sorry, you guys. Why did? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I woke up at uh, 4.45 this morning, uh, drove from Bakersfield to be here with, with y'all. Um, as, as was mentioned, I work at WP Engine. I've uh, been there for quite a while now. I remember when it was four other guys in a cubicle. It was, and now we've got multiple offices, tons of people. It, like People walk up to me and say, hey man, how's it going? I'm like, there's so many people. It's like I don't even know have I met the person before or not. And I'm just like, Hey, guy, what's going on? Anyway, so it's a brand new talk. Um, I'm kind of excited to give it to y'all for the very first time. Um, so in the past, this information has been suppressed, but now it can be told. We're not all Devo. We're all devs. How many of you feel like you're a developer? Show of hands. That's actually really great. We actually all are devs in one way or another, either through implementation of other people's plugins, uh, through implementation of our own code. We're all developers in one way or another. <laughs> Technically, people who code, yes, might be more quote unquote legit developers than other folks. But don't let that set you back. Anyway, today we're going to look to the future, as Kanye likes to call it, the future. So let's talk about the future. How many of you have heard of PHP 7? Right, PHP, next version. They're skipping 6. It's like that much of a monumental change. The latest stable version of PHP right now is 5.6. I'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, but PHP 7 is the new hotness. It's actually ridiculously fast. Um, current tests show uh, that it, it, a nearly 2x or 100% performance improvement over PHP 5.6. Um, now, the PHP 7 beta uh, is actually really soon. It's likely any day now. I think uh, it's supposed to be June 8th was the target date. Um, and... Um, people will be able to start developing on that and actually already have very shortly. Um, the release of PHP 7, um, this nice thing that will make your code faster, that they've uh, really worked hard to uh, make sure works well with WordPress. Since WordPress has almost a quarter of the market now, especially in PHP, as far as uh, PHP goes, it's, it's even higher. Um, because of that, they've made sure that it, it works with PHP 7, that, that some general, general WordPress will work with PHP 7. Um, it releases um, on November 2015, probably. 
Um, how many of you have kind of uh, ever waited for something to come out and then, oh, well, we needed a couple more days. We needed a couple more weeks. Uh, if any of you have ever waited for game updates from Valve, okay, the laughter is all I needed. Um, so there's a, a PHP 7 vagrant where you can kind of start working on development of PHP 7 today. Um, how many of you are familiar with vagrant? Okay, like a little more than half the crowd, that's good. Um, this big, long explanation. Um, you can go ahead and read it if you want, but I'll give you the TLDR. Vagrant creates and configures virtual development environments. Makes it... You guys hear me okay? Okay. Uh, virtual development environments. Uh, it makes it super easy to use. Um, now, um, yes, as they say, um, Vagrant is a tool for building complete development environments. With an easy-to-use workflow and focus on automation, Vagrant lowers development environment setup time, increases development slash production parity, and makes the works on my machine excuse a relic of the past. It's pretty bomb. Um, now, the PHP 7 Vagrant um, 2x speed increase, uh, it sounds pretty great, right? You guys are probably pretty anxious to, uh, to get your code on that as soon as possible. Like, who wouldn't, who, is there anyone here that doesn't want a faster site? Okay, good. Still, there's a catch. There's always a catch. PHP version adoption, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. Um, it really stinks at the host level. Um, how many of you are on the latest and greatest PHP 5.6 at your current host? One. 5.5? Five, five? Uh, <coughs> okay, a smattering of hands. Um, let's say 5.4 or 5.3. Let's lump that in. Okay, that's even more people. Um, let's actually look at what PHP 5 adoption actually looks like. So here's the majority. PHP 5.3, which actually was end of life last August, the, um, it's at 41.4% of PHP websites, according to W3Techs, run on PHP 5.3 today. PHP 5.4, which September 12th, 2015, mere months from now, 30.1% of sites. Just take a second and let that sink in. 71.5% of all PHP sites that are powered by those versions, they'll be dead by the end of summer 2015. That's summer of this year. That's um, not great. Now, legacy PHP is bad, uh, especially PHP that depends on an interpreter that is no longer receiving security updates or support. Um, so what about non-legacy PHP? Let's look at the numbers there. So, PHP 5.5, end of life, June 20th, 2016, it's got a whopping 9.3% of sites are running on it. Again, these numbers are from W3Text as of just a few days ago. Give me a second. Crazy. <laughs> PHP 5.6, 1.5%. PHP 7, you guys are waiting for the speed increases that will come with PHP 7. Um, you might be waiting a while. And PHP 5, as you can see, end of life next year this time next year. And remember how many people rose their hands for being on a PHP 5.5 server or service today? Those numbers are abysmal. Now, I feel like maybe I'm talking you guys out of wanting to develop for the future of PHP. But 
that's not what I'm here to do today. Still, how long is it going to be until enough hosts support PHP 7? Say it comes out in November. Okay. Let's, you know, go ahead and treat the estimate as a, an actual, like, solid one. Um, 12, 18 months before PHP 7 is available on, like, a trickle of cutting-edge hosts. Maybe you'll get someone who, a few days after PHP 7 is released, maybe, like, a month, oh, someone, like, oh, I'm going to hack on PHP 7 over the holidays and... You know, they'll, oh, it's a super <laughs> cutting edge, like, beta feature. But still, that's, that's not a lot of hosts. Um, how long can we wait, really? Fortunately, there is another. Anyone know the other? HHVM. <laughs> now... HHVM, um, let's kind of go into it. Um, what is HHVM, and how is it better? This is uh, another lengthy slide, but HHVM compiles PHP to an intermediate bytecode. The bytecode then gets translated to machine code by a just-in-time compiler, and doing this removes the usual interpreted uh, execution bottlenecks that come with using native PHP. So, here's the cool part. On top of that, HHVM analyzes your code as it runs. It then, after, after it collects enough data, it optimizes what it considers to be frequently invoked and expensive or heavy memory um, pieces of code. So it's fast, it's smart, it's really, okay, um, think of how many of you have ever had to run a Java app on your desktop? Most of you, right? Um, are they ever fast and easy to use or feel native and great? No. They suck out loud. But HHVM, because it actually compiles your PHP, it, it's, it's like running more, say, like a native app. So you actually get the speed benefits. You get some of uh, the things that come along with being an actual compiled rather than interpreted application. How much faster, though? So using WordPress 4.1 um, with 20 concurrent users, um, the number of requests per second that PHP 5.5 could handle, 256. PHP 7... 627, and HHVM 3.7, the latest and greatest, 666. That's pretty rad. Even a little metal hand. I'm sorry, I'm very proud of that. Um, I'm also 13. <laughs> um, latency uh, on all of these requests, um, at the same 20 concurrent users, WordPress 4.1, um, PHP 5.5, 78 milliseconds. Lower is better in this case. PHP 7, 32 milliseconds. That's pretty great. Slightly a little quicker. Slightly. HHVM 3.7. Now, you can probably tell that I'm, I'm a fan of HHVM um, over PHP 7. I, I think that once PHP 7 starts getting implemented, it, both, like, both projects will kind of keep keep things moving forward. Uh, PHP has kind of been like this entrenched player for such a long time that H the HHVM project, which is a few years old now, motivated the PHP project to start picking up and doing these improvements to the engine. Otherwise, we'd still be looking at PHP 5.5 like class, like, oh, well, maybe we can get another extra hundred concurrent users, things like that. This is actually motivating PHP 7 to be better. And I, honestly, that Vagrant, uh, which are in my slides that I've linked on Twitter, at Booga, if you want to follow, B-O-O-G-A-H. Yeah. Um, 
So, um, but those, <clears throat> anyway, I lost my train of thought and I'm very sorry. Um, HHVM, however, um, it's, it's fast and PHP 7, they're going to keep uh, pushing themselves. So what's the catch with HHVM? There's always a catch, just like I said earlier. Now the HHVM compiler is crazy strict. Uh, if you're using poorly written code, things can go sideways fast. And by sideways, I mean uh, you're not going to get any speed improvements. Your site is going to serve up errors, things like that. And there's this really annoying problem with HHVM, and it has kind of the occasional memory leak. Uh, um, so long running PHP processes uh, can actually chew up tons of RAM. Uh, and in some hosting uh, situations where HHVM is used, scheduled restarts of, of the HHVM server processes are not uncommon. Um, so, okay, your HHVM server ha or, uh, service has to restart in order to keep interpreting code. That's not great. There, there are ways around this. Um, however, you know, there are some catches. Um, still, don't let that scare you. There are some large companies already using HHVM in production. Facebook developed HHVM, um, and they're using it in production. If you use Facebook, I won't have people show their hands, because I assume most of you use Facebook, and there's two or three of you in the crowd who go, no, I don't really have a Facebook account. It really sucks there. Uh. Anyway, Wikipedia. Etsy and Box all use HHVM in production today. These are big companies using this technology today. And there are hosts that are already HHVM ready. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that WP Engine supports it as I work there. However, DreamHost has rolled out a really great HHVM implementation with DreamPress 2. Pagely also has a fantastic implementation. SiteGround just rolled it out for particular users. SiteGround's here today. You should maybe talk to them about that if you're interested. And uh, Kinsta as well. All of these places already give you the ability to run your code in HHVM today. Now, how do you make sure that your code is HHVM ready? How do you make sure that you're not gonna just upload it, turn HHVM on, and things are just gonna start falling over? Um, fortunately, there's an HHVM vagrant. Just like the, uh, the PHP 7 one, and it's actually made specifically for WordPress development. Would you like me to tell you about it? Because if not, too bad. I, that's really where the rest of my slides go. HGV. And uh, I don't know if you noticed that URL, but yeah, we kind of built it. Um, I'll give you guys a second to uh, copy the URL and for me to take a drink of water. Now, it was built by WP Engine, yes, for our Mercury platform. Mercury is a high availability um, version of our platform that actually has multiple servers that are both running the same code. So failover, if a data center goes out, you're still serving up high-speed HHVM code. It's kind of, uh, car manufacturers will make a supercar and eventually, uh, the features will trickle down to everyone else. So yeah, this is kind of a supercar. This is not something that like, unless you have a decent budget, you may necessarily be able to sign up for today. In fact, a number of implementations that I listed earlier, the same thing. You got to kind of pay a little money for the experimental fun stuff. However, there are SiteGround, DreamHost. You can play with stuff for as low as like $20. Or if any of you are comfortable with spinning up servers at DigitalOcean, 
or someplace like that for as cheap as $5 a month, you too can have an HHVM server. No matter where you host your site, you can use HGV to test your code. Not only can you use HGV to test your HHVM code, you can also use it to test your PHP code. We've done some really great things that allow you to basically drop your files into a single directory, load a subdomain, look and debug your code under PHP. The documentation is all there. But then you can reload a secondary domain with HHVM and test your code there as well. So you actually get the advantage uh, of being able to test both PHP if you decided to deploy to PHP or HHVM if you actually have one of the great hosts to, uh, to have implemented it already. Now, HGV, I'm gonna toot the horn a little bit about this. Um, we're really proud of it. Uh, we built it with members of the TenUp team. TenUp is well known for its vagrant uh, VVV. Show of hands, people familiar with VVV, kind of, sort of. The nerds in the crowd, love it. So, VVV, um, it's kind of like one of the de facto standards for vagrants and WordPress development. Um, so we got the guys who did that to help us with this. And um, there are some development teams that have actually switched their entire team. I can't tell you who I really want to. I can't. Um, that are actually using it in mass now to test against PHP and HHVM. Um, also, it comes included with a bunch of debugging and benchmarking tools. Uh, Xdebug, XHProf, Siege, you can actually test, um, like load test. Um, comes with the WordPress plugins Query Monitor, Debug Objects, and Debug Bar, all installed by default. So basically the entire environment, the WordPress install, everything is set and ready for you to import your content and start hammering on it and testing your code against this sort of future of PHP. Now, installing HGV is easy-ish. I'm not gonna front. Um, I hope you guys are comfortable with the command line um, and prerequisites. I see a lot of Macs in the audience, which is very fortunate because these instructions are for Mac. Um, you have to have Git installed, VirtualBox or VMware, Vagrant, and the Vagrant host updater plugin. If you're interested in doing this, you should copy the short URL because it links to all of this so you don't have to take any notes. Um, but basically, this will install um, Homebrew. You guys familiar with Homebrew, Mac people? Um, you might have already had it installed, yes. So you can skip that. You might already have Git installed if you're a developer, of course. Um, here's where it gets fun. VirtualBox and Vagrant. You can actually install those via Homebrew as well on the command line and keep them up to date. Brew install, castroom cask, brew cask. It's kind of a redundant sounding command. I'll grant you that. Um, however, once you have that installed, brew cask install Vagrant installs Vagrant for you. You don't have to download something go through your whole downloads folder to try to find the thing you just downloaded, open up a disk image, click, install, wait, let it chug along for like forever. Um, it, this, that just installs it for you. And you never have to worry about it again. And then when you update, you can use Br the brew updater to update to new versions. Also, brew cask install virtual box. 
That'll take care of the whole mess there for you as well. And once you have Vagrant installed, plug and install Vagrant Host Updater. Hopefully all of that rambling will have given you enough time to copy that URL. So you can just... I hate telling you to copy and paste some commands because that's some like lazy stuff. But um, it, I'm trying to make it easy. To install it, I don't have a URL for this. There's actually instructions on the HGV page, but it's as simple as cloning our GitHub repo, changing the directory to HGV, and then, since Vagrant is installed, just typing Vagrant up. Um, once you do that, it'll start kind of chugging and churning, installing all the prerequisites, installing uh, all the things that, um, that you need to get running with this. So while HGV installs, do like Don Draper and make yourself a drink. It should only take about 30 minutes. So you might have time for like two drinks if you're not making cocktails and like a beer. Um, now, once it's installed, and you have it, and you can start playing around with it, it's time to get to work. So one of the features that we've added in uh, HGV uh, is local file access. Okay, that, that does happen with most vagrants. But you can use your favorite text editor without having to do any sort of wonky uh, fun stuff. And the data directories are fairly simple where HGV was installed, probably your home directory, HGV data, sites, and you can, and plugins and everything else. You can just edit right then and there using your favorite um, text editor. Say you use uh, TextMate, I don't know. That's what I use because I'm cheap and it's free online. Sublime Text, etc. Or if you're old school and like VI or Emacs, uh, you can do that too, or you can SSH in just by a simple vagrant SSH command. It logs you right into the box, doesn't prompt you for a password, anything else. You're connected to this virtual stack to start kind of messing around. PHP my admin access. Everybody loves PHP my admin. Okay, that's not really true, but still. So we're on HGV 1.2 right now. We've put out a couple releases. Um, it's been fun, but um, currently HGV 1.2 doesn't allow for multiple domains. So you basically have one install, and then if you want to test your code, you have to either spin up another install or delete everything in the vigor. That's stupid, right? Do you want to have to delete and delete and delete? Like every time you want to check some code changes? No. So we're going to allow you to start configuring uh, multiple installs and domains um, with something as simple as a plain text YML file. You can set what your environment is. Say you want to download uh, Trunk for 4.3. You can set what the names of the domains are for HHVM and PHP. And then once you type Vagrant up, it will actually provision all of those domains. So say you want to set up 10 installs, 15 installs, Vagrant up, like set that up and Vagrant up, and all of it will unspool for you. Um, so we've got that going for us, which is nice. Um, I've been given the 10 minute warning. Most professionals wouldn't acknowledge that, but I'm not a professional. So, um, got about 10 minutes for questions. Anybody uh, have any? You know, okay, so the question was, um, as I've kind of played around with HHV, HHVM, correct? Yeah. Uh, as I've played around with it, uh, what 
code has caused the most problems. Um, you know, I really, one of the nice things is we've, uh, at WP Engine, we've been working with Facebook and the team on HHVM to kind of make compatibility um, work fairly well. A lot of the stuff in the repo, they've gone through a lot of trouble to make sure PHP frameworks, uh, WordPress, other uh, popular applications just run. Um, a lot of the stuff we run into is custom code that tends to be problematic there. Um, and in that case, um, the, the debug uh, output is fairly revealing as to kind of, you know, what you can fix and, well, I mean, it doesn't tell you what to do, but naturally. Um, so is that kind of, it's, it's custom code mainly. I haven't, I'm not gonna stand up here and shame some plugins or, or anything else, but, yeah, but a, a lot of it, yeah, a lot of it is just custom code. A lot of it is just stuff that people kind of uh, have written, maybe not necessarily have written unit tests for or things like that and, and just really can kind of tend to be sloppy with. Cowboy code, things like that. John? My question is almost the same, but I'm going to try to rephrase it. So, okay. are there any, like, coding patterns or things that commonly blow up in HHVM? And I get you're saying it's custom code, but is it like... So the question was, are there any common patterns for the people on the video um, that we're seeing that kind of blow things up, as it were? Um, so, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I'm I'm not necessarily the developer that troubleshoots those things. I'm just the speak speak guy. Um, but I can and will find that out for you, uh, and write a blog post about it, and link it on my Twitter account. And at the end of the talk, I will tell you how to follow me on Twitter. Um, anyone else? Yes. Um, so the question was, how does it scale up, say, when it's 1,000 users, when it's 40 users? Actually, I am online, so this might work. No, nope, I passed it. No, I didn't. There we go. Okay, WordPress 411. This is where I got my stats for. Um, concurrent current clients, they only really tested up to like 40. Um, but this should give you an idea of, so it's, it's roughly similar as things scale up. It just matters on the amount of uh, memory and resources you kind of have to throw at it. Um, I think when you start getting a thousand concurrent users, we've actually found in a lot of our testing and a lot of our optimizations that we've done, um, like on our end, um, we're seeing in some cases uh, four to eight X speed improvements for things like BB press and buddy press and things like that. We've actually uh, worked with JTrip um, to do a lot of work on making sure that things are like as optimized as possible. Like out of the gate, PHP sees about a 2x increase though. Um, and yeah, as you can see, 5.3 uh, down the line, like <laughs> that's a nice little jump right there. Um, there are so what's stopping people from switching to HHVM today is mainly support at the host level. There are hosts that are, you know, that are implementing it. I wouldn't be surprised. Mendel's not in the room, I would ask him. And he probably wouldn't cop to it if they were, but I'm sure GoDaddy and, you know, any of uh, the EIG companies, Bluehost, things like that, 
uh, are working on an implementation of HHVM like in the near future. Like, I'm sure that, that that's on the horizon. I saw John's hand go up again. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are still 5.2 even. Yes. Um, and we all know WordPress 4 is written for 5.2 without a lot of the newer fancy encoding namespaces. How much does that affect performance when you go to something like JHCM or HHCM? Does it run way better if you're writing more modern code times? It, it uh, and the question for the folks watching at home um, or out in the audience who couldn't hear John uh, was, um, wow, I can't believe I blanked. Um, I got it. Yeah, does coding style matter between 5.2, etc.? cetera? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, using kind of more modern, especially actually with PHP 7, even though there's no host that implements it today, anything else, um, PHP 7, uh, if I've read correctly, uh, of course I haven't had much of a chance to play with it myself either, but if I've read correctly, if you write your code to 5.6 standards, it should just run on PHP 7. I'll believe that when I see it. I, I can fire up the Vagrant and test it out, I guess. Um, however, uh, and they, um, again, they have optimized for WordPress core. So even though it's written to 5.2, I'm sure that, and, and they're going to keep following it because it's such a popular framework. Does that answer your question? Good enough. <laughs> All right. I'll take it. Anyone else? Y'all just want to like get to dinner or home or the after party. So, uh, as I promised, HGV 1.3 probably in the next month or two. We're trying. It's yeah, it's not on GitHub yet. But we when we release it, you can bet that. Um, well, I will tweet about it. Again, desperate grab for followers on Twitter. Um. Or uh, WP Engine will also tweet about it as well. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's code for the future of PHP and the future of WordPress. Thank you.